Hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and welcome to part 2 of my starter guide for Warhammer Vermintide 2. In this part we'll be covering the characters and careers, and if you've not seen part 1 which covers the basic game mechanics, there's a link to that down in the description. Starting with Marcus Kruber and his mercenary. I'd give this one the nickname of Cleaver. It's a fairly simple career, but still one that can be quite effective. Each career has passives and a career ability that is activated. The passives on the Merc are that you have 5% more crit chance, your attacks also cleave through more enemies, and if you hit 3 enemies in one cleave, that is to say one attack, you'll gain 10% attack speed for 6 seconds. The activated ability, the career ability, the ultimate, whatever you want to call it, is morale boost, where you release a shockwave that staggers enemies close to you and grants your nearby allies a significant amount of temporary health. To touch on that ability briefly, when should you use it? Well, when your team finds itself in a sticky situation. It's an immediate temporary health gain and a short stagger. I would personally say it's more of a defensive ability, Use it if you're surrounded to give yourself a bit of breathing room. And the temporary health is an added bonus to that breathing room. That's not to say you can't use it offensively against bosses, however. As for his talents, the first row offers a choice between increased stamina regen by 30%, crit chance by 5%, and healing effects on you by 30%. For me, this would come down to the latter two. It seems like all effects along the lines of increase healing effects upon you by X% percent also work on temporary health, meaning you could combine this with equipment traits to get 60% more gain. So in a nutshell, I would say either build a more offensive Kruber, starting with crit chance, or defensive with the increased healing. This is something that applies to most characters, but look for talents that have synergy with each other. The next row at level 10 is a choice between increased power by 3% for every nearby enemy, stacking up to 5 times, meaning you'll have 15% power in most situations. Then we have reduces damage taken by 35% when below 50% health, and finally reduced attack interruption time when taking damage by 35%. I would say the first option almost exclusively but the second one would work for a more defensive build. Then at level 15 we have increased power by 15% when your passive is active, as in when you hit 3 enemies with one swing you'll gain 15% more power as well as the attack speed. Or you can get 25% reduced damage when it's active. Or you can spread it to allies. This is up to you, but I'd always pick the one that spreads it to allies. Everyone gaining 10% attack speed would ideally give you a larger DPS boost than simply you gaining a bit more power. Plus, I'm team oriented. At level 20, your options are critical hits grant temporary health, kills grant temporary health, or when bosses die, gain health. The middle option here, kills grant temp health, is just amazing. As it happens, every career for every character has the exact same level 20 talents, and I think you should take temp health from kills on everyone for the most part so I'll skip that on the other characters. Finally, at level 25, you choose between reduces cooldown of ability by 30%, increased temp health gained, and morale boost also revives knockout allies. Personally, I would take the last option. This can be a literal game saver on higher difficulties. It's a little situational though, and 30% cooldown is also great. Most characters have a 30% cooldown reduction at 25 talent. But for Merc Kruber, I'd say, even though it's a bit situational, take the one that lets your ability instantly revive other people. That's so useful. The most basic role of the Merc is, in my opinion, a support class, in that you'll be clearing hordes excessively well and allowing your team the room they need. For weapon choices, I would personally say bring a halberd and handgun. That might seem odd, as the halberd doesn't strike you as the most crowd-clearing weapon off the bat, does it? But if you do a default bindings, left click, right click, left click, combo and repeat that, you'll have pretty powerful cleave, especially once you start rolling some attack speed and crit properties on your equipment. The halberd is also amazing at killing elites, it's one of the best elite killing weapons in the game. Try the push attack into light attack combo, hold block, press light attack, release block, 
press light attack again for a quick double overhead that tears up pretty much all armoured enemies. Weapon also has incredible reach and some armour piercing on certain attacks. You just can't go wrong with the halberd, it's amazing. It's too good, perhaps. Huntsman, Kruber's ranged class. Right now, at least, maybe his most powerful. Whilst the Huntsman can use the same weapons as the Merc, the special thing he has now is a longbow with incredible piercing and range. His passives encourage a ranged playstyle. Huntsman Kruber will recover one ammo on a ranged headshot. He also has twice the effective range on his ranged weapons. Finally, he grants a crit aura, which gives everybody nearby 5% more crit chance. He also holds more ammo than Kruber's other classes. As for his class ability, Hunter's Prowl is a short stealth, but beware, if an enemy is charging up a big attack and you go into stealth, they'll still keep tracking you until that one attack finishes. And it's very possible to take damage from other attacks that you walk into. The ability is extremely versatile. You can use it to revive an ally, to escape a nasty situation, or simply for its offensive capability. It grants you a damage boost for about 6 seconds, and it increases your reload speed, and it gives you infinite ammo for the duration, so don't be afraid to pop it during a horde and go ham spam. How about his talents? At level 5 you can choose between 20% reload speed, 25% reduced spread, or an extra stamina shield. If you're using a bow, you'll probably want either the reduced spread or extra shield. Reload speed doesn't seem to work on bows, as they don't strictly reload. I really enjoy the bow on Kruber, so I've not really bothered using his other weapons, but the blunderbuss and the handgun can definitely be good. The blunderbuss in particular can destroy bosses. I just like using the exclusive class weapon, the longbow in this case. At level 10 you choose between regenerating all your ammo after killing a boss, crits causing enemies to take increased damage, and enemies that grab or pounce markers take double damage. It's a no brainer, take crits cause enemies to take increased damage. Level 15 we have recover 2 ammo from scoring a headshot, or after scoring a ranged headshot gain 25% crit chance until your next crit, or finally ranged headshots increase reload speed by 35% for 2 seconds. Whilst the first one sounds pretty good, I'd say the middle one, ranged headshots increase crit chance, is a lot better. And that's because we can build around crits regenerating ammo. So the entire build will be focused mostly on crit chance. And remember, even passively, hitting one enemy in the head is going to give you one ammo back, as well as giving you a bunch more crit chance with this talent. Level 20, we of course take 10 health on kill, and at 25, we have three options reduce cooldown. Temp health during Hunter's Prowl and 20% power increase during Hunter's Prowl. Best option, power increase or cooldown depending on your preference. The role of Huntsman? Well it's a very versatile class, but the way I play it is to focus on the longbow and crits. There is a weapon trait known as Scrounger which regenerates 2 ammo on a crit, and Huntsman also regens 1 ammo on a headshot. Here's the thing, if you suck at aiming, like I do, headshots aren't worth it as you're going to miss more than you'll hit. But when you have a horde of enemies running at you, you fire a critical arrow into them, it might hit a bunch of the suckers, it might get a headshot, but that's not the important thing. But if you pierce through a bunch of enemies with a critical arrow, keep in mind that arrow is critical, it's going to crit every enemy. So you can hit a bunch of enemies and one ammo is going to regenerate you like 20 bullets or arrows. There isn't much in Vermintide as satisfying, as shooting a crit arrow through a horde and hearing like duh, 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 as your ammo goes up, it's just amazing. And hey, you also get the satisfaction of knowing those vermin just got hit with maximum penetration. There's many ways to build your damage output, but I personally focus just on crit chance. If there's a horde, I'll spam the longbow into them. If there's an elite or a special, two or three charge shots are usually more than enough to waste them. For a boss, I'll go into Hunter's Prowl, maybe pop a speed potion, and then just unload into it for some good DPS. And remember, Hunter's Prowl gives you infinite ammo, so if you're low on ammo and you see a horde coming, pop Hunter's Prowl, spam at their heads, and get a bunch of ammo back. You're not much of a frontline fighter as a Huntsman, but you can decimate both hordes and elites from a safe distance. Keep in mind, 
fully charging the longbow makes you stand in place and doesn't seem to increase the damage, only the zoom. But also keep in mind, the hitbox for arrows is surprisingly large and generous. They're a bit like Hanzo's arrows in Overwatch. Apparently you're shooting entire tree trunks. Don't be afraid to body shot enemies. As for melee weapons, take the halberd because it's still amazing. Finally we have Kruber's last career, my favourite, the Foot Knight. This is one you'll be playing in the game's prologue. You could think of this as Kruber's tank class, and it's a little like a paladin in some ways. You have strong armour, a defensive aura to help your friends. This career brings so much to a team that it's perhaps my favourite in the game. First up, your passives. Foot Knight has 15% damage reduction aura, the range of which is quite small, so try and stay close to your team, or at least the frontline melee fighters. Then he has a nice plus two stamina passive, as well as a passive damage reduction that only affects him. As for his ability, you charge forwards, knocking down enemies. Sounds a wee bit underwhelming when I put it that way, doesn't it? What's so good about slamming into enemies like a train? I'm glad you asked. The answer? It works on everything in the game. Is that Chaos Warrior skating towards your Carillion, about to split her in half? You can knock him on his ass. Did a Chaos Boss just spawn and is eating your Carillion's head? Use a Concentration Potion, stunlock the boss. That is assuming you don't knock it off a cliff for an insta-kill. Simply put, this ability is amazingly versatile. The cooldown is really low, and you can use it to clear crowds, get to an ally in danger, or just knock down a strong enemy. Because when foes are on the floor, they can't participate in the battle, unless being hit by your friends and dying counts as participation. Two small tips for the charge. You can hold block and then charge, which means you'll be blocking for the duration of it. If you hit the block button again whilst charging, you'll cancel it, which is very useful if you don't want to fly off a cliff, or if you don't want to charge into the middle of a horde, but you do want to knock them all down. Hopefully at some point, the developers will patch it, or somebody will make a mod that makes it so that you're always automatically blocking. That would make it a lot easier to block and also cancel. Talents. At level 5, we can choose between block and push angle, 25% more health or 5% attack speed. I personally roll with the attack speed. 25% more health is nothing to scoff at. Just as I build Huntsman for crit chance, I build Foot Knight for attack speed. Level 10 talents are a bit disappointing. Our options are Reviving party members gives them 50% damage reduction for 20 seconds, or gaining uninterruptible attacks 5 seconds after block is broken. Finally, charge attacks increase stamina regen for 2 seconds. I typically use a halberd on foot knight, so I don't bother with charge attacks, so none of these are very appealing. So I take the revive damage reduction. If I'm using the executioner sword, I would take the stamina increased from charge attacks. Foot Knight will probably be doing a lot of revives and it's something he's good at. Also, when you're reviving an ally, when they're standing up, they are vulnerable to damage. Keep that in mind. So maybe try and make sure nobody's going to slap them. Also, when you are reviving a friend, once the revive bar gets to about 50%, you can actually use your class ability to charge and still revive them. It's very stupid looking, but it's pretty useful in certain situations. Level 15 we choose between three very great options. Number one means our defensive aura also grants a extra stamina shield. Number two gives it another 5% damage reduction and number three gives it 5% movement speed. This will largely be preference, but I would say an extra stamina shield is superior. Whilst we already have a bunch, one more shield is quite a boon for a teammate using a low stam weapon like a dagger. Keep in mind, stamina isn't just for blocking. This can also be a great boon to people who rely on push attacks for their damage output, such as the Slayer. Basically, you can't go wrong with extra stamina. It's both defensive and offensive. Level 20, we take temp health on kills. Level 25 is a little more interesting. 30% cooldown reduction, 25% power increase after charging, or 100% block reduction after charging. First up, the last option here is kind of pointless. Why would you need to block if you just knock the enemy down? Kill it instead. So I'd say take the power increase or the cooldown reduction. I personally roll with cooldown reduction. 
Foot Knight is just amazing. You have the Halberd for armor piercing and headshotting strong enemies with moderate crowd control. You have your charge for making every enemy in the game sit down. You help your friends by reducing their damage taken, providing a great anchor and also giving them a stam shield if you spec for it. As for your ranged options, I personally roll with the handgun because you can kill shielded storm vermin in one shot with it. It also gives you the range to shoot anything pesky in the distance. Keep in mind, the handgun is basically a sniper rifle, just without a scope. I mostly take it to destroy storm vermin because I abhor them. Blunderbuss is amazing though and has surprising range. Executioner's Sword is a nice alternative to the Halberd with amazing side to side swings and the overheads are really powerful and can chunk bosses and elites. I just kind of prefer the Halberd a little bit, but that about does it for the Trooper. Bardin Gorikson, the Ranger Veteran. It's Bardin's starting career and it's also his ranged expert. The Ranger Veteran is, to put it one way, an item battery. You can help with your team's ammo and bomb supply, so let's have a look at the range of its passives. Special enemies will drop ammo on death. Usually this will only be a few shots, but it's still super helpful. Do note that anyone can pick it up, not just Barden, but only one person can pick up each drop. Ranger Veteran also has 50% more ammo, capacity, and faster reload. As for the career ability, Barden drops a smoke bomb that hides him from enemies, it also stuns nearby enemies, and if you're standing in the smoke, you do bonus damage. Whilst initially it might feel underwhelming, and it does have a cast time unlike most abilities, it is very versatile, and can be used offensively for the extra damage or defensively in a pickle, or to revive a downed ally. As for his talents, level 5 we have a choice between 5% attack speed, 30% increased healing, or reduced ranged spread. Frankly, these are all fairly good options, so I would say pick whichever one sounds best to you. If you melee a lot and want to build around attack speed, go for that. If you want to focus on ranged, take the reduced spread. Alternatively, if you plan on taking a necklace with the Chalier's Boon that increases the effect of healing on you, it might be worth stacking it with this talent, as it works on temporary health too. At level 10, we choose between, whilst disabled, damage taken is reduced by 50%, or 5% increased movement speed, or 25% power increase when out of ammo. Personally, the reduced disable damage is useless in my eyes because if your friends don't save you right away, there's a decent chance a little extra time won't make any difference anyway. I think the movement speed might be best here. Then at 15, it's a choice between your passive granting you a potion instead of ammo on every third enemy, or increasing the ammo restored by your passive enemy kill drop ammo, or finally granting a bomb instead of ammo on every fourth enemy. I'd say take the bomb one, as confirmed bombs every few special enemies is really good. 20 we of course take 10 health on kill, and at 25, Catch a Breath gives Bardin 20 health when using his ability. Preparation lowers the cooldown by 30%, and Ranger's Ambush increases the duration of the ability to 14 seconds, and means you can leave the smoke, but keep the benefits of the bonus damage. I would say that is the best by a decent margin. The overall playstyle depends on your preference, but I'd say you can't go wrong with a one-handed hammer for crowd control and then a grudge raker, handgun or crossbow as your obliterator of enemies. You'll be welcome in any group for the extra ammo and bombs if you take the talent, and you're capable of doing a lot of work as the ranger vet. The main reason I bought this game was for Ironbreaker, as I love the concept of the class. I love tanks and I love dwarves. Dwarf tanks are therefore a natural fit. And whilst the Ironbreaker can take one hell of a battering, it has some of the most beginner trap aspects of its class, and I'll go into those soon. But first, let's talk about the passives. First one, Gromrilama. Every 20 seconds, Bardin absorbs a hit completely. That is to say, if you get hit, you will take no damage, then you have a 20 second cooldown until it happens again. This passive is amazing as it can let you eat some huge hits. Next up, Ironbreaker takes 30% less damage in general and has 2 extra stamina, which means 1 extra stamina shield. In a nutshell, 2 stamina equals 1 shield. And stun duration is reduced by 50% as well. Finally, his ability, his career ability impenetrable. All damage taken is reduced by 50% and your block cost is removed entirely, meaning you can block forever. 
but push attacks still cost stamina. This also taunts all nearby enemies, forcing them to attack Bardin. Note, this doesn't work on bosses by default, and it lasts for 10 seconds. And whilst I'm not 100% sure on this, it appears that even after you initially activate the ability, if an enemy was outside of your range and then walks into your range, they will then be taunted. But again, I'm not positive on that, but that is how it appears to work. So how about talents? Level 5 we can choose between an extra stamina shield, 20% more health, or increase push and block angle by 50%. To briefly explain that, each weapon has a cone they can effectively block and push in. So let's say there's an enemy standing right in front of you, then he sidesteps, he might be out of your cone now, and if he's behind you, he's almost certainly out of that cone. In general, I find those abilities that increase the angle very meh, but that's just me. Situationally, they can be useful. I would take the health this time, as you don't need more stamina, you essentially have infinite when you have your ability up after all. Level 10 really depends on your loadout. You can take minus rhythm that increases stamina regen by 40% after landing a charge attack, or you can take iron drake which reduces heat generation from drake fire pistols and drake gun by 30%, or you can take gazelle's duty that makes allies take 50% less damage for 10 seconds after being revived. If you take either of the drake fire weapons, then go for iron drake. If not, I'd say gazelle's duty. Once again, with stamina, you don't really need more on the iron breaker as you have so much to begin with. Level 15 is the easiest choice in your life, or should be. 50% faster stamina regen when Grommel armor is active, that is to say when you haven't been hit and it's off cooldown, or recover 10 temp health whenever it absorbs a hit, or Reduce the cooldown of Gromril to 13 seconds from 20. That's the one you definitely want. The last one, Tunnel Fighter. It almost doubles the effectiveness of Gromril armor, and means you can take a free hit every 13 seconds. And at level 20, obviously it's Grudgeborn, kills Grant temp health. Level 25 is an interesting one. Oi Wazuk allows your ability to taunt bosses. Booming taunt increases its radius, and it's pretty much useless, and Heart of Gromril increases the duration to 15 seconds. Here's the thing about your ability though, it has such a long cooldown that I would say you are mostly using it as a defensive oh no button against patrols or bad horde situations, and in times like that, another 5 seconds of greatly reduced damage and infinite stamina and the taunt is a lot more useful than being able to have a boss focus on you for 10 seconds. In an ideal composition, bosses are going to be kited, or being shredded anyway. Whilst it might initially seem really useful, the 5 extra seconds is a lot more useful in all practical situations. Now let's talk briefly about some of the beginner traps this career has. Namely, it's a tank class, so you want a shield, right? Wrong. Unfortunately, the shield and hammer and shield and axe in Vermintide 2 just underperform compared to the basic one-handed hammer or axe, which is really stupid in my opinion, but oh well. For starters, the one-handed hammer has something like one less stamina than the shield and hammer, which makes no sense. You're trading in all of the advantages of the one-handed hammer for a tiny bit more stamina, and the movesets are just inferior. If you have to take a shield weapon, then take the shield and axe. The axe gives you some armor penetration after all, but honestly, you're better off taking the two-handed axe or the one-handed hammer. Now, I personally enjoy the two-handed hammer, but the one-handed one is superior. It's faster, it has slightly less stun, but more or less as good clearing ability with the light attack, light attack, push attack combo chain, and freakishly, it has the same range as the two-handed hammer, despite being less than half the size. Illogical. Two-handed axe, meanwhile, is probably the best weapon you can take as the Iron Breaker. It's the best at killing armored and elite enemies. It has decent crowd clearing, but again, clearing crowds is typically fairly easy, and you also have your ranged weapons for that. So you probably want to go with the two-handed axe. As for ranged weapons, the trap here is the Drake Fire Gun, the flamethrower. 
Whilst initially it might seem amazing that you can absolutely waste an entire horde by yourself with no effort, however there's a few things to consider. A. The Drake Fire Gun requires charging up to be most effective. This means you'll only really be using it effectively when you have time to charge it up. If you have time to charge it up, this means that the horde is one you had time to prepare for, which means you wouldn't struggle with it anyway. If you know a horde is coming, then you have time to set yourself up and anyone will be able to handle it, even one player by themselves most of the time. The Drake Fire Gun is just taking it from easy to mindlessly easy. B. The Drake Fire Gun is useless against anything remotely far away. It does terrible damage against bosses and elites, the main reason you'd want a ranged weapon. Suffering even one hit will knock you out of the charged attack, meaning if you get surrounded, it's useless, and even Grom Relama absorbing a hit will still have you knocked out. C. It's incredibly annoying for your team to have their screen full of fire, plus you are robbing them from the temporary health they'll be taking from hordes. Not to mention, it's very easy for powerful enemies to sneak in through the flames and mess you up, such as plague monks and other berserkers. In a nutshell, the flamethrower is really cool and it's amazing at staggering patrols or obliterating hordes you know are coming, but if you know a horde is coming, you aren't going to have an issue with it anyway, so why bother taking it when you're losing out what the other ranged weapons give? There is no realistic upside to taking it that would not be more beneficial than if you had another weapon. The Grudge Raker is amazing at killing special enemies and is decent at clearing hordes to boot. Now I personally rock the Drake Fire Pistols as they have the crowd control for hordes that's probably 70% as good as the Flamethrower and has more range. Plus, they give you a ranged option that extends beyond 10 feet. Plus, they still have infinite ammo, so you don't need to worry about that, and it means more ammo for your allies. However, the Grudge Raker is an amazing option. In fact, it's probably your best option, especially if you take it with Scrounger so that when you're out of ammo, you can just use the Shove Attack and try and crit some hordes to regenerate ammo. The general role of Iron Breaker is a team anchor, but unfortunately, it just gets outperformed by Slayer and Ranger Veteran most of the time due to the way the game is designed. It's still a very cool and fun class, and if you're new to Legend, then Ironbreaker is a great option to go in with so that you can have a more forgiving experience. It just needs some tweaking to be truly effective. But every class in the game is viable in some way. If someone says, oh you're a waste of a slot as an Ironbreaker, you're not. You're just not as meta as the other two options. Have you ever wanted to be a half-naked manlet who jumps around smashing everything? Then Slayer is for you. It is the most high-risk, high-reward career in the game, and it probably takes the most skill to play in the game, but it gives huge returns on that skill. If you see a good Slayer, you're going to be very happy, because they are probably, when played right, the best carry in the entire game. Let's cover the passives, so you have an idea of what I mean. First passive is Trophy Hunter, a stacking damage buff that stacks every time you hit an enemy. I think it goes up to around 3 stacks. He also has increased attack speed. His career ability is Leap. He jumps through the air and stuns a target upon landing, gaining a burst of even higher attack speed. And whilst not really a passive, a unique thing to the Slayer is that you have no ranged weapon, because your body is the bullet, you are the ranged weapon. Instead, you can equip two melee weapons, and as to that, I don't think there's any better combo than dual axes and one-handed hammer. The hammer for crowd control, the dual axes for murdering everything, although you can't go wrong with a two-handed axe or a two-handed hammer as your other weapon, it really depends on what works best for you. So how about talents? Level 5 we have 20% dodge range, 5% crit chance or 25% more health. Whilst all of these are good in their own way, I would say either crit chance or dodge range. Then at level 10, there's crits cause enemies to take increased damage, 15% movement speed when you're the last person standing, 
or damage taken from one attack is reduced to 10 damage or half of its original value, whichever is highest. This is one of the best defensive talents in the game, and one that Bardin can get a lot of use out of. However, if you're like, so good that you never get hit, obviously you don't need to take it. The increased damage from crits is really nice, but mostly you would only use it on bosses, because everything else you will mess up so fast it won't even matter. The reduced damage works on more or less everything. The movement speed is good if you're trying to solo missions by speedrunning, which the Slayer is pretty damn good at, but otherwise it's very situational. So if you're a beginner Slayer, take the defensive option. If you're like a top tier Slayer, then I don't know why you're watching this video, but you know, take the crit damage thing. Then at level 15 we have, at max stacks, Trophy Hunter grants cooldown reductions, or we can have Trophy Hunter increase defense with every stack, or finally increase the duration of Trophy Hunter buffs. Whilst the defense one sounds really good in theory, I think you're better off taking the cooldown reduction, because that is how you primarily defend and attack, by jumping in front of hordes, leaping at big enemies to stagger them, and so forth. Level 20, obviously it's 10 health on kills. And 25? No escape causes Bardin to get 25% movement speed after leaping. This is not bad at all, but I'd probably only use it if I was soloing and speedrunning. Unstoppable makes it so your attacks are uninterruptible, and I think this is just useless. When Crunch makes it that your stagger from leaping is enhanced. You don't need movement speed if the enemy is staggered, right? The goal here being to have leap up whenever you want it, so you can hurtle into things and knock them around. Slayer is a very easy class to mess up though. You might jump into a horde and then get obliterated because you were surrounded. Try and aim in front of the horde instead. Aim at elites or specials to try and stagger them and then kill them whilst they're disoriented. The Slayer's DPS is unreal, but it's very easy to go down. Personally, I'd probably build mostly for crit. He has passive attack speed after all, and I would also say go for a decent amount of stamina. Two from a necklace or weapon, for example. Maybe even roll it on both. Remember, Foot Knight Kruber can increase your stamina. Lovely. Why stamina? Not so much for the blocking, although that's always nice, but because the push attack with the dual axes is amazing. A double overhead which, because it's two weapons, counts as two attacks. You'll be wanting to use this to clobber anything more threatening than your common house rat. If you really like the idea of a Slayer, just be prepared for a lot of practice. You will need to be really good at dodging and positioning and just, just about everything, because you have no ranged options really. But it will pay off, because a good Slayer, I cannot stress enough how amazing a well-played Slayer is. On the other hand, be prepared to run into a lot of really bad Slayers who join your group and just die constantly. Next up it's Kirillian, the elf. Do you want to be Legolas? Well, Waystalker is the class for you. Kirillian's first class is a great beginner option that can also be quite powerful at endgame. Her passives include passive regeneration of health up to 50% health. If you are under half health, you will gain 2.5% of your max health every 10 seconds until you reach half again. She also has 50% more ammo capacity and double the effective range. There's also a hidden ability wherein she can zoom on weapons by pressing, by default, mouse 3. Her career ability is True Shot Volley. Kirillian fires three arrows that seek out enemies. Homing arrows, what could be better? Goes without saying, this is a really good for getting those enemies who you might be able to hear but not see as you can shoot them up in the air in the general direction of the sound, and more often than not, the arrows will find home. Whilst you can definitely use it on nearby enemies, I would say prioritize, well, high priority targets like blight stormers and so forth. And keep in mind, most berserkers, that is to say plague monks and more like, spawn in packs of three. So, you're shooting three homing arrows means you can take out an entire berserker pack. How about talents? Level 5 is 30% stam regen, 5% crit chance or 5% attack speed. Considering she's a ranged focused character, I would say the crit chance is the best here. Then at level 10 it's increased damage bonus for headshots, crits do 30% more damage when she's above 45% health, 
or recover 30% ammo after killing a boss. I'm going to be honest, I would take the bonus crit power when above 45% health, and that's mostly because I suck at headshots and rely more on body shots and crits. At 15, it's regen also applied on all party members, but the effect is halved, or regen also recovers ammo, or increasing the health regen. I'd say take the middle option, ammo recovery. That's a super useful ability. Then at 20, it's obviously temp health on kills. And at 25, you can choose between true shot recovering 20% of your max ammo, or recovering 20 health, or reducing the cooldown. This is an interesting option, but I'd say either go for the ammo regen, as having both passive and on-demand ammo regen is quite useful. Especially once you start to combine it with things like Scrounger, where you'll be regenerating two ammo on ranged crits. Goes without saying, I think you'd probably want to build her for crits. You can never go wrong with crits. Weapons? All of her melee are pretty good in my opinion, so I'd say go with whatever floats your boat. If you really want to min-max and be meta, then her best melee weapon is probably the glaive, and her worst perhaps the spear, but the difference between her worst and best melee weapons is quite small, as I think they're all good in their own way. As for ranged, Longbow is a great sniper, but considering her class ability, I think you'd be better off taking the Hagsbane, which is a rapid firing weapon which can do AoE damage over time. Generally speaking, I don't think there's any wrong options though. If your party is very low on elite killers or snipers, then a longbow might be the way to go. I like the Hag's Bane though, because it looks and sounds awesome. And whilst the Waystalker is a very balanced character, I don't think she brings as much to the party as her other two careers do. But she's very well rounded. What's so good about the Handmaiden then that I'd rather have one than a Waystalker? For starters, it looks awesome, and its de facto weapon is a spear, although it can use others, and spears are the coolest thing. Whereas Waystalker is sort of the ranged career, Handmaiden is the closest the elf has to a tank. But the passives are as follows. Increased dodge distance, a stamina regeneration aura that helps your team, and your revive can't be interrupted. Her career ability is dash, where she, well, dashes through enemies, going straight through their bodies. If you hit enemies with this, they are also hit by a bleeding effect. Sounds a bit underwhelming compared to homing death arrows, but don't let that fool you, it's very useful. We'll get into that, but first, the talents. Level 5, you can have 40% more ammo capacity, increase block and push angle, or gain a stamina shield. This will depend on your loadout, but either the ammo or the stamina shield are good options. Personally, I would say take stamina because of how her playstyle is, but you can't go wrong even with the push angle on this character. At level 10, it's reduced damage by half when Kirillian is last hero standing, or increase power by 15%, whilst reducing attack speed by 5%, or finally, clear wounds and convert temp health to permanent when a boss dies. Whilst all of these are okay in their own ways, it's really going to depend on how you build her, and I would say the first two are the better ones. See, I have come across quite a lot of handmaidens being the last person standing because of how she is a kind of dodge tank, and often they have brought the map back from a failure by surviving. But I would say the safest, most beneficial all the time kind of option is the 15% power but reduced attack speed, as you can easily make up for that lost attack speed elsewhere. We can have an additional 50% stamina regen, or an additional 20% dodge distance, or 5% movement speed. Weirdly, I am going to suggest the stamina regen. If you took the level 5 stamina talent, that is. Handmaiden is amazing at kiting enemies due to her stamina. You can almost block indefinitely, whilst you're using your dodges to evade the more heavy swings, and even if you take them, the extra regen will help you out. She is one character where I think a stamina build is extremely good, and perhaps even the best way to play her. Of course, it does mean you would need a weapon with a really nice push attack. As for level 20, obviously we'll take temp health on kills, and 25 our options are reduced cooldown on dash by 30%, dash deals more damage, or Kirillian vanishes for 3 seconds after using dash. 
that last one, the stealth for three seconds, I think that's a clear winner. Not only does it mean you can use it to escape tricky situations, but you can dash to friends and revive them with near immunity. Thanks to your high stamina, and being invisible, and having uninterruptible revives, which aren't actually uninterruptible as a boss can knock you or stagger you away, but hey. Finally, most of her weapons are good, but I like the spear. Arguably at high levels on Champion and Legend, the spear is probably her worst option, but even then it's still not like a terrible weapon. The glaive has the most shield breaking and armor penetrating properties though, and shielded or armoured enemies will be the most trouble on high difficulties. As for ranged, again, Hagsbane or Longbow depending on your party comp and preference. Building her around stamina and even to some extent push angle can be very worthwhile. If you play Handmaiden, practice dodging a lot. You might say she's the dodge tank of Vermintide, along with the Slayer. A Waystalker is okay, and a Handmaiden is fine, but when I see a Carillion, I want a Shade every time. Why? Oh, you see that amazing spin that I just did? It never stood a chance. That's why. The Shade is a ninja, a rogue, an assassin, a boss killer. She can chunk the most dangerous enemies in the game in moments, and what more could you want than that? Her passives, critical hit backstabs instantly kill man-sized enemies. She does 50% more damage when attacking enemies from behind as well. Like the Slayer, she only has two passives because she doesn't need any more. Her class ability is Infiltrate, wherein she goes invisible for 10 seconds and can move through enemies. This ability ends when she attacks. This can be used to run away or reposition, or to get behind a boss and shred them. Whilst in stealth, she gets a large power modifier. Most simple way to play Shade? Is there a boss or tough enemy? Go invisible, run up behind it, and give it a charged attack. Watch it die. As a matter of fact, you can one-hit kill Chaos Warriors on Legend even without getting behind them. Just run up to them, poke them, they die. Let's look at her talents though. Level 5 we can take dodge range increase by 20%, or 5% attack speed or stam regen by 30%. Attack speed is always a nice option, although the daggers are so fast that you might want to choose another option if you're using them. If you're using the glaive, by all means the attack speed would be good, I just like the daggers though. Level 10 we have power increased by 15% when holding a grimoire, increased damage taken by enemies disabling Carillion, or 5% movement speed. I personally roll with the 15% power when holding a grimoire, you don't need to be holding it, just anyone in the party, and most matches have people holding grimoires. Level 15, we choose between backstabs returning 1 ammo, or increasing the angle for backstabs, or backstab damage increased to 75% up from 50%. Now, there isn't really much in the game that's going to survive your backstabs to begin with, so you can either go with even more damage against bosses, or the utility of having more ammo. Keep in mind, it's not really worth backstabbing most enemies in the game, unless they're bosses. Some elites, sure, go for it, but if you're in your ability, then you only really want to bother backstabbing bosses, as they die so fast anyway. With your infiltrate, even front stabs kill everything for the most part. That said, I still take the increased backstab damage, because I really, really want bosses to feel my disgust at their existence, and I want them to go. 20 is obviously 10 health on kills. 25? That is a tough one. We can reduce the cooldown by 30%, which is always good, or we can take Shadow Hunter, which means that ranged weapons no longer break infiltrate, meaning you can fire your ranged weapon a few times and then backstab. Finally, there's Veil Walker, which increases the duration to 15 seconds. Frankly, I don't think that's very good. You rarely need 10 seconds to get into position, so you'd only really benefit from this if you're using it to piece through the level speedrunning or trying to revive your buddies who are very far away. I'd say take Shadow Hunter. If you are taking Shadow Hunter, a longbow makes a very nice companion weapon. It means you have some time to snipe things in stealth, which can be really nice in a bad situation. But let's say you have a boss or horde 
and some elites. You can pop infiltrate and use your longbow to snipe the rattling gunner that is making your life hell. Then turn around and backstab the boss, tearing out a huge chunk for Bardin to later eat. I personally roll with dual daggers and either Hagsbane or Longbow for Shade. The daggers aren't great at hordes, in the sense that a lot of the time you'll be holed up in a choke point and people with longer weapons will shred anything that gets near whilst you sit there. Hagsbane does let you demolish hordes and is decent against bosses too, but the Longbow's penetration isn't to be discredited for hordes, and combined with Shadow Hunter, it can be a really cool combo. Keep in mind, the damage bonus from Infiltrate only applies to melee. Ah, holy stigma, bless this ravaged career. Not that Witch Hunter Captain is bad, it's just a little lacking in my opinion compared to the other options Victor has, namely in its career ability. Before we touch on that, let's look at his passives. A Witch Hunter means that tagging or marking an enemy Default keybind is T, I believe, causes them to take 20% more damage. This is an amazing ability as it's so easy to use and has no dire restrictions. A free power increase? Yes please. Next up, Witch Hunter Captain suffers no light attack block cost from frontal attacks, and critical hit headshots instantly kill man-sized enemies, similar to the Shade's backstab. Witch Hunter Captain appears to have a hidden passive too, increased headshot damage. As for the career ability, Animosity pushes back enemies staggering in an area around Victor and boosts everyone's crit chance for 6 seconds. Whilst this certainly has its uses, it could do with some more tweaking to make it more desirable. As with most staggers or knockbacks, it's fun to push things off cliffs with it. Let's look at his talents though. Level 5, we have 30% more ammo capacity, an extra stamina shield or 20% dodge range. I'd personally either take the ammo or the stamina depending on if I wanted to focus melee or ranged. Level 10, we choose between reduced damage taken whilst disabled by 50%, increased headshot but not on crits by 25% or 15% more power when holding a grim. I'd roll with extra power when party has a grim, or death now, the extra headshot damage, as it synergizes very well with his hidden passive. If you can land headshots, then definitely take it. I don't really have any skill with headshots, so I would take the grimoire bonus. Level 15 we choose between increased crit chance by 8% for 4 seconds when taggable enemies die, recover 2 health, for the party when taggable enemies die, or 10% attack speed for 4 seconds when they die. Again, if you focus on range, take the crit. If you focus on melee, I think the attack speed's better. 20, we take kills grant temp health. And 25, the options are 50% more radius for animosity, increase the duration of animosity to 10 seconds, or reduce the cooldown by 30%. If we're comparing 4 seconds more crit, to being able to use the ability 30% more often, I'd say take the latter. The pushback is, in my opinion, the more useful part of the ability and only triggers upon its activation. Weapon wise I'd probably roll with the rapier. It has a unique function that allows it to fire the pistol in the other hand using mouse 3 by default, the alt fire button, which costs no ammo. Combine that free shot with his headshot damage and passive and you can insta kill some enemies with it. The rapier also has reduced stamina drain when blocking attacks within its block angle, which synergizes very nicely with his eternal guard passive. As for ranged weapon, I would honestly roll with the set of pistols because it fits his theme so damn well, plus you can unload a bunch of headshots and just go ballistic. Witch Hunter Captain is a pretty nicely rounded character in that he deals quite well against both hordes and elites, and he has a nice mix of defensive abilities and, well, offensive abilities, if you're good at headshots. The ranged specialist for Victor, and what a monster this career is. As of time of writing, he is the best ranged elite killer in the game bar none. Let's have a look at why. Bounty Hunter's first passive, Blessed Shots, guarantees a ranged crit every 10 seconds. You can also reset the cooldown for Blessed Shots by getting a melee kill. He has 50% more ammo capacity and increased reload speed. 
As for his career ability, he shoots a powerful piercing bullet. Remember the scrounger trait that gives you 2 ammo back on a crit? And Victor has confirmed crits? You know where I'm going with this. As for his talents, level 5 we can have 5% attack speed, reduced weapon spread at range by 25% or 20% reload speed. I personally take reload speed as I use the range weapons that have slower reload speed. Level 10 it's 25% power boost, increase on crits, 25% power when out of ammo or 30% faster revives. I take the crit boost because with my build it's almost impossible to run out of ammo if you're shooting it at enemies. And if people go down, well, you know what, they must suffer for their transgressions and their incompetence. I don't want them to stand up 30% faster, I want them to stand up 30% slower. Level 15. It's a choice between shots affected by blessed shots consume no ammo, or reducing the cooldown of blessed shots to 7 seconds down from 10, or crits grant 2 temp health. Let's rule out that last one because it kinda sucks. The other two are super interesting. I haven't done the math, but I believe that Blessed Shot consuming no ammo would result in a larger overall DPS gain, not to mention ammo efficiency. The interesting thing about this pick is that it acts as if you didn't actually shoot anything, so you don't need to reload, essentially. You will fire, but the game treats it as if you didn't consume a shot, so let's look at the crossbow, which usually you shoot, then you reload. With this talent, you shoot, and then you can shoot again immediately with no reload. It's just amazing. Level 20 is temp health and kills, and at 25 we choose between modified career ability to fire two blasts of pellets in a cone, or fires two powerful bullets in a straight line, or reduced cooldown by 30%. The buckshot or the shotgun version seems pointless to me as what's it good for? Clearing hordes? The easiest thing to do anyway? Double shot means you get more bang for your buck and you do more damage, but personally I think I'd have to take the reduced cooldown, because whilst the extra damage is nice, being able to use the ability more often is preferable for me, as the primary reason I'd be using the ability is for staggering or insta-killing a tough enemy. If I can insta-kill an enemy, I don't need more damage, and the extra damage won't allow me to one-shot a boss, but having the ability more frequently will let me stagger the boss more often, so I'd say it's preference, as both are useful in their own ways. Buckshot seems pointless, and the cooldown reduction just seems a lot better overall. As for weapons, well, the volley crossbow you really can't go wrong with, it's amazing, but I slightly prefer the normal crossbow. When aiming the crossbow down sights, you get extra crit chance. Scrounger means crits regenerate ammo, and he gets a confirmed crit every 10 seconds, possibly less if you're also getting melee kills. This means a lot of crits, lots of ammo regen, lots of shooting, lots of elites dead from a very safe distance. And remember, you shoot your crossbow into a horde, that bolt can penetrate, and if it's a critical, it means it's going to regenerate ammo for every enemy that it hits. As for melee weapons, it's really a toss-up between the two-handed sword or the flail. The two-handed sword is really good for crowd clearing, which is the one thing the standard crossbow isn't amazing at. The volley crossbow is a lot better at crowds, but the popular community pick would be the falchion, a great all-rounder weapon with some armor piercing. If you really want to be meta about it, take either the falchion or the flail, but really, I don't think you can go wrong with any of his melee options. And it goes without saying, I build the bounty hunter for crit chance, I want 100% crit chance, I want to never run out of ammo, and I never do. The most satisfying ability in the game belongs to the Zealot, because he has an absolute fit and starts screaming. And Victor's tanky career can also push out obscene amounts of damage. His passives, Fiery Faith, power increases by 5% for every 25 health missing to a maximum bonus of 20%, and Zealot has 150 base health, an extra 50 to most classes and careers. His heavy attacks can't be interrupted, and he resists death on taking lethal damage on a cooldown. His career ability has him lunge forwards at sanic speeds, gaining 25% attack speed for 5 seconds. 
Like Footnight Kruber's charge, you can cancel the charge by blocking. A habit you'll definitely want to learn. Talents. 5 has 35% stun duration reduction, 5% crit chance or stam regen. If you're building offense, take crit. Defense, take stam. Level 10, it's reduce damage taken by 35% whilst below 50% health, or damage taken from one attack is reduced to 10 or half its original value, or increase power by 3% for every nearby enemy, stacking up to 5 times. So if you have 5 enemies around you, that's 15% power boost. Noise. Again, if you're going defense, take damage taken from one attack is reduced or halved, or offense, take the power from nearby enemies. Level 15, it's fiery faith also grants stamina per 25 health missing, stacks 5 times, or fiery faith also increases power boost of crits by 10 per missing 25 health, stacks 5 times, or increases block angle by 10% for health missing, yada yada, stacks 5 times. You know the drill here. Defense build, take the stamina. Offense, take the power boost. Keep in mind, you shouldn't mix and match these. Either take all the offensive ones or all the defensive ones for their synergy. Level 20, it's no surprise. Temp health on kills. I could almost make a case for regenerating health when bosses die, as you might want to be low health to hyper mode bosses, but that's situational. Really, really, really situational. Level 25, we have increased duration of career's ability, buff to 8 seconds from 5, or the ability causes him to restore temp health for each hit, or reduce the cooldown by 30%. Honestly, these are all kind of strong options. The temp health one is obviously the tankiest one, but when it comes down to the other two, 5 to 8 seconds is a 60% increase in duration, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not smart enough to do the maths here, but I feel like the extra duration would be preferable. The initial charge of the Zealot's ability isn't really that useful. The main reason for the ability is the attack speed. Basically the opposite of the Witch Hunter Captain, where you want the initial shove and the crit chance is nice but just a bonus. For the Zealot, the charge is the bonus and the attack speed is the main reason to use it. Finally, we touch on Sienna Fuego Nasus Fuguki, the fire old granny woman. I'm going to say it, this is perhaps the most pointless career in the game and I really think they need to tweak it to make it more worthwhile, or even to have its own identity. Let's look at the passives though, for just because. Tranquility means that Sienna will automatically start venting overcharge after avoiding damage and not casting spells for 8 seconds. Reckless Haste allows her overcharge to increase spell charge speed, and Pyromantic Surge increases her ranged damage. Her career ability involves teleporting forwards, leaving a trail of fire along her path. Talents. At level 5 we have ranged attack charge speed increased by 15%, an extra stamina shield or 30% more healing received. Take the extra stamina or healing if using the trait on your necklace. At 10 we pick between reduced stun duration, reduced damage taken when you're on the last one left, and nearby enemies increase power by 5%, stacking 5 times. That's the one you want. The power when surrounded, the rest kinda blow. Level 15, it's increased the effect of tranquility, or when Trank is active, Sienna's range charge time is reduced by 40%, or reduces stam cost when blocking attacks by 40% when it's active. I'd probably take the last one unless I'm using a staff that has charge on it. 20, it's temp health on kills. 25, it's firewalk removes overcharge, or firewalk trail lingers, or reduce cooldown. I would definitely take the firewalk removes your overcharge one, but honestly, I think Battle Wizard sucks right now, so I'm going to stop talking about it. The only real way to play it that I can see it being any good is if you're using the complex staff, or another staff that requires charging up. Whilst Battle Wizard is in my opinion the weakest career in the game, Pyromancer is the strongest. What it does, it does perfectly. In fact, the Pyromancer is so damn good at its job that some players dislike playing with them. They are so powerful right now, they can make the Vermintides more like a stroll on the beach. An uneventful stroll. But let's look at the passives. Critical mass increases your crit chance based on overcharge. As you heat up by shooting your ranged weapon, you get 5% crit chance per stack, and it stacks up to 4. Then we have searing focus that increases ranged damage. 
only two passives because she doesn't need anything else. Are you noticing a trend here? Career Ability Burning Head is a fireball that seeks enemies automatically. The projectile has a health pool that is drained every time it hits an enemy, meaning that it can hit a whole bunch of weaker enemies or one larger enemy, but only once. This ability is great at clearing hordes, great at killing elites, great at staggering and damaging bosses, it's just amazing at everything. And the best part is, you can fire it off every few seconds. I'm not exaggerating, you can have it up every 5 seconds or less. Let's look at her talents and equipment to explain how. Level 5 talents are reduce overcharge generated by 10% or 5% attack speed or ranged attack spread reduced by 25%. I'll be honest, none of these are super useful in the build I use, so I would just say attack speed for the rare times you'll be clobbering things and if you're not using the dagger. If you're using the dagger, go with overcharge reduction. The weapon I use has no spread so that talent is useless. Level 10 we get increase spell charge speed by 25% whilst under 50% health, or increase overcharge decay by 100% when party has grim, or reduce damage taken when disabled. Again, not a great talent here. I use the grimoire one. The weapon I use has no charge speed as well as no spread, so the overcharge decay is really the only one worth a damn. Level 15 is where things start getting a bit more interesting. Critical Mass also increases attack speed by 2%, stacks up to 5 times with overcharge. Or we have Critical Mass reduces overcharge generated by 5% per 8 overcharge, again stacking 5 times. Or Critical Mass reduces stamina cost of block by 10% per 8 charge, stacking 5 times. I take the attack speed. If I know I have to melee, I can build up a bunch of overcharge and get 10% attack speed on top of the 5% from level 5 talent. 15% is not bad at all especially if I have another 5% on my weapon, which is the mace, by the way. 20 we take temp health on kill. And 25, there's three options, but there's really only one. Do you want to reduce the cooldown by 30%? Sounds good, but no thanks. Do you want the career ability to recover 20 health when used? No, I don't, because that's stupid. How about using the career ability, vents your weapon, removing all overcharge, Hell yes. So here's the thing, you use the beam staff with the resourceful trait that reduces the cooldown of your ability every time you crit. You waggle the beam staff around in a horde and you get your ability in seconds. Remember the passive where your crit chance is increased as your overcharge builds? Yeah. Oh, you're about to overheat or you just want to watch things burn? Use your ability, repeat. The beam stuff isn't just super fun to use, it's amazingly good. Standard fire is a long range beam that reminds me of my favourite Diablo 3 skill, Disintegrate. I love laser beams, I can't get enough of them. If you tap right click whilst holding down the standard left click, you'll do a sniper shot. So basically, if you're shooting your beam at something and then you tap right click, you're gonna kind of do a pulse of a sniper shot. It looks a bit weird and buggy, but trust me, that's what it's doing. Whereas if you hold down right, click, you're going to bring up shotgun mode in case rats get close and you don't want to smack them but blast them away. Another honourable mention to the bolt staff, because it has sunlight spears on the secondary fire and it looks really funny when you use the primary fire. The conflag staff is also really cool for using its charge spell to stagger enemies. Basically, when you bring up the charge on the conflag staff, it brings you up a targeting radius on the ground, like a circle. You can put this under like elite enemies and it will stagger them. It's really good for stun knocking and stuff like that. But the beam staff is just so damn cool and powerful that I use it all the time. And remember, you want the resourceful trait on a beam staff. For melee, I personally take the mace. The dagger is really good, like the dagger is amazingly good, but the mace benefits more from the attack speed talents than the dagger does because the dagger is so fast already. And it's nice for bopping enemies on the head, like armoured enemies and so forth. Honestly, you barely need a melee weapon with this build because it's insanely fun. The mace has okay stamina, so it gives you an option for if you really do need to melee. Just be warned, your teammates might hate you for taking all the fun. 
finally we have the Unchained, Sienna's tankiest career, and I will admit the class I least understand of all of them. But let's touch on the passives. Blood magic means 50% of the damage Sienna receives is instead transferred to her overcharge. Slave to Akshi gives her no slowdown on her overcharge and unstable strength increases her melee power on high overcharge. And Blazing Sinews means she has reduced block cost on high overcharge and consumes overcharge. Her career ability is she explodes, dealing damage and clearing, venting her overcharge. This also hurts friends, albeit not for much damage and only on champ and legend, but I have seen Unchained Sienna's um, outright murder teammates using their ability, it's upsetting. As for her talents, level 5 is 20% more health, 25% more overcharge or increased block push angle by 50%. These are actually all pretty solid for Sienna. You can get 20% more health from equipment too, so you'll have to work it out for yourself. Would you rather have higher health pool or higher overcharge? I'm tempted to say the overcharge because you can't really increase your actual maximum overcharge that easily as you can with health. And if you're taking that, I would say build around it and focus on it so you can be very tanky. At level 10, it's revived allies take 50% less damage for 10 seconds or clears any wounds and converts temp health to permanent when bosses die, or charge melee attacks grant 40% stam regen for 2 seconds. I'd personally take seared nerves. Revived allies take 50% less damage after being revived for 10 seconds, but the stamina one isn't bad at all. At level 15 it is reduced overcharge generation by 15%, or increased rate of venting by 50%, or reduced damage taken from venting. I kind of feel like the reduced overcharge generation is the best here, but I've not math crafted it. Take this with the increased overcharge capacity at level 5 in particular for some nice synergy. Level 20 it's temp health on kill and 25 you have reduced cooldown of living bomb by 30% or increased damage of living bomb or increased radius of living bomb. Now you see here considering how the living bomb works I would say take the cooldown reduction which will allow you to vent more often. I do believe living bomb needs some tweaking though. My suggestion make it work like the version employed by the sun king Kael'thas. Living bomb should apply a burning damage over time on every enemy it hits and after a few seconds they should explode. Then we could have a level 25 talent that causes living bomb to spread indefinitely. Enemies explode and spread the damage over time and explosion to more enemies who then spread it again when they explode. Wouldn't that be satisfying to see all those chain explosions? But as for right now, you want to use Living Bomb primarily as a defensive measure. Use it when you're surrounded and your overcharge is getting really high and then just vent, clear out the enemies, get some breathing room. But that about covers it though. This ended up being much longer than I anticipated, that's why I had to split it into two videos. I hope you enjoyed this 5 hour long video, or found it useful in some ways. Remember, Vermintide 2 is ongoing and all of these things can be tweaked or changed, so the information herein is subject to change blah blah blah. But hopefully this will introduce you to some of the more advanced mechanics and ideas and give you an idea of each career and character. Until next time, you take care. Now get out there and kill some bad rats for Blessed Sigma. Scatter lumberfoots! Mayflies. 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 Boy, Mayflies. In all of Sigma's balls. Ah, that's just the elf. Mayflies. Ignore it. Mayflies. That's what Mayflies. I do. Mayflies. In Sigma's name, Mayflies. I will end this heresy. Mission accomplished.